Welcome to the Quick Pro Camera Guide for the Nikon D600. This is a great camera that will capture amazing images as well as HD video. We hope you'll enjoy learning more about it with this guide. This guide is meant to be a study tool to be used in connection with and not a replacement of your camera's owner's manual. You can watch it entirely in one sitting or by chapter. The functions and features of the D600 that we cover are designed to give you a solid working knowledge of your camera. It's really not possible to cover every configuration on your camera, but we will provide you a very solid foundation to build your digital photography skills on. With this new information, you'll be able to improve your ability to capture great pictures in a variety of shooting settings. The D600 has an impressive 24 megapixel full frame image sensor, a large 3.2 inch LCD, a 39 point autofocus system, and many other great features and functions that we'll discuss in this guide. Let's get started. Your D600 has many sophisticated buttons and dials, and to take the best pictures with your camera, you'll want to be familiar with the functions of each of them. Let's begin by taking a closer look at many of the camera's features. First, there is the power switch and the shutter release button. To take a picture, simply press and hold the shutter button halfway down for a moment, allow the camera to focus, and press it the rest of the way down to take the picture. This is the exposure compensation button, the movie record button, and the metering mode button. The D600 has three metering modes to choose from, matrix, center weighted, and spot. We'll discuss more about metering modes later in the guide. This is the mode dial. To change the camera's shooting mode, press and hold this lock release button and rotate the mode dial. You can choose from flash off, auto, P or program auto, S or shutter priority, A or aperture priority, and M or manual. The user setting modes and almost 20 different scene modes. We'll discuss the camera's shooting modes in greater detail later in this guide. This is the release mode dial and lock release button. To set the camera's release mode, press and hold the lock release button and rotate the release mode dial. You can choose from single frame, continuous low speed, continuous high speed, quiet, self timer, remote control, and mirror up. Here is the accessory shoe, which will allow you to use an optional flash unit with your camera. This is the built-in flash unit. This is the control panel. The control panel is where you can view and change many of the camera's important settings. On this side of the camera, you'll find the connector covers, where you can use connectors to connect the camera to other devices. Here, you'll find the microphone and the headphone connectors, which will allow you more flexibility when recording and playing back sound in the camera's movie mode. This is the USB connector, which will allow you to connect the camera and computer or compatible printer. The mini HDMI connector, which will allow you to connect the camera to an HD television. This is the GPS connector, which will allow you to use an optional GPS unit with your camera. Also on this side of the camera, there is the flash button. Simply press this button to make the built-in flash pop up in the camera's PSAM and user settings modes. You can also use this button in conjunction with the main and sub command dials to change the flash mode and the flash compensation. This is the bracket button. To set the number of frames to be bracketed, press and hold the bracket button while rotating the main command dial. To set the exposure increment, press and hold this button while rotating the sub command dial. This is the AF mode button and the focus mode selector. This is the lens release button. To mount a lens, make sure that the camera is switched to off. Hold the camera with one hand and the lens with the other like this. Align the lens's index with the camera's index then gently rotate the lens until it clicks into place. Take great care not to scratch the lens by allowing it to make contact with anything. When you want to remove a lens, press the lens release button while holding the camera with the same hand, and then with the other hand, rotate the lens until it uncouples. Avoid changing lenses in windy or dusty conditions. This will help the image sensor stay clean and free of dust. Now let's take a look at this side of the camera. Here we'll find the memory card slot cover. Your D600 has two SD memory card slots. When you're inserting a memory card, you'll want to make sure that the manufacturer's logo is facing the back of the camera. Simply insert the card until it clicks into place and close the card slot cover. To remove a memory card, simply press the card and it will eject. 
Before you start taking pictures with a new memory card, it's a good idea to format it. Also, keep in mind that your camera will operate faster if you periodically format your memory card rather than simply deleting images from it to free up space for more picture taking. Make sure that you don't reformat your card unless you have already copied the images that you want to save to your computer. Formatting your card will erase all the images. To format a memory card, press the menu button and use the camera's multi-selector to navigate to the setup menu, indicated by a wrench icon. Use the multi-selector to select the format memory card option. Here you'll need to select the card that you'd like to format. Press yes and press ok. With the D600 you can also format the memory card using the metering mode button and the delete button. Simply press and hold these two buttons simultaneously and a blinking FOR will appear on the control panel. You'll also see one of the memory card icons blinking in the control panel to indicate which card will be formatted. To change the card that will be formatted, rotate the main command dial. Then simply press the mode and delete buttons again to complete the formatting. As we've discussed, this is the sub command dial. This dial is used independently and in conjunction with many buttons on the camera to control a variety of camera and shooting settings. This is the AF assist illuminator. In low light conditions, this will illuminate the scene to help the camera find focus. This is the depth of field preview button. You can use this button to preview the effects of the aperture setting that you have selected. Press and hold the button while looking through the viewfinder to see what the depth of field will look like in your final image. This is the function button. You can use the custom setting menu to customize this button to provide quick access to many of the camera's settings. Now let's take a look at the back of the camera. The most prominent feature is the large 3.2 inch LCD screen. This screen serves several purposes. First, it displays images that have been taken. Using the camera's multi-selector, you can scroll through the images on the memory card. Second, when the info button is pressed, the LCD monitor provides fast and easy access to several of the camera's settings in the information display. Third, when the menu button is pressed, the LCD monitor displays the camera's menu system, where you can change many important settings in the camera. Finally, when the Live View button is pressed, the LCD screen provides a live view of the scene. Directly above the LCD monitor is the viewfinder, where you can see the camera's settings when you're taking pictures. Before you start taking pictures, you'll want to focus the viewfinder. To do this, use the diopter adjustment control located to the right of the eye cup. Gently rotate the control until the automatic focus points in the viewfinder are in sharp focus. At the bottom of the viewfinder display, you can see the focus indicator, the metering mode, the shutter speed, aperture, exposure meter, the ISO, and the number of shots remaining before the memory buffer fills. And when the flash is being used, the flash ready indicator. Over the scene, you will see the camera's focus points. When the shutter button is pressed halfway to focus, the areas where the focus points blink in red will be in focus. This is the playback button. Pressing this button will allow you to view your images on the LCD monitor. This button is the delete button, which will allow you to remove images from the memory card in playback mode. This is the menu button. Pressing this button will allow you to access the camera's sophisticated menu system. This is the retouch picture control button. In the camera's playback mode, pressing this button will allow you to make retouched copies of your images in camera and save them on the memory card. In the camera's shooting modes, this button provides access to the picture controls. This button has three functions. First, it is the protect button. Pressing this button while in the camera's playback mode will protect the displayed image from accidental deletion. Second, this button is the help button. Whenever there is a question mark icon displayed at the bottom of the LCD screen, pressing this button will display a description of the currently selected option. Finally, this button is the white balance button. You can press and hold this button while rotating the main command dial to select the white balance setting. This button has two functions. First, it is the playback zoom in button. When you're viewing an image in playback mode, you can press this button to zoom in and see detail areas of the image. You can use the multi selector to scroll to other areas of the frame. This button also serves as the quality button, which will provide fast and easy access to image quality settings in the camera's shooting modes. 
Press and hold this button while rotating the main command dial to select the image quality. Press and hold this button while rotating the sub-command dial to select the image size. This button has two functions. First, it is the playback zoom out thumbnail button. When you're viewing a zoomed image in playback, you can press this button once or multiple times to zoom out. In regular playback, you can press this button to see a thumbnail view of the images on the memory card. This button also serves as the ISO button. In the camera shooting modes, you can press and hold this button while rotating the main command dial to select the ISO setting. This is the AEAF lock button. When the shutter button is pressed and held halfway down, you can press the AEAF lock button to lock the focus and exposure while you recompose the image. This is the main command dial. Rotating this dial will allow you to change exposure settings as well as many other camera settings. As we've discussed, this is the multi-selector. It is used for navigating the menu system, scrolling through images in playback, and accessing information in the information display. You can press the OK button or the right side of the multi-selector to confirm selections in the menu system. This is the focus selector lock. When it's set on the L or lock, the focus point is locked and cannot be changed with the multi-selector. This is the live view selector, which is used to select whether the camera will shoot still images or movies when in live view. This is the live view button. Pressing this button will activate the camera's live view. To end live view, simply press the button again. This is the info button. Pressing this button will activate the information display and pressing it a second time will allow you to access and change several camera settings. Your D600 has a variety of image area, quality, and size settings that will allow you to capture images with resolution, file format, and compression that you need for your scenario. Before you set the image quality and image size, you'll probably want to familiarize yourself with the image area options on the D600. There are several options that will accommodate both FX lenses as well as DX lenses. To select the image area, enter the camera's shooting menu and select the image area option. There are two menu items. First, you can choose to enable or disable auto DX crop. When this option is enabled, the camera will automatically select the DX crop image area when a DX lens is attached to the camera. The other menu item, Choose Image Area, is where you can choose the image area you'd like. The first image area option is FX 36 by 24. This is the camera's full frame option and will allow you to use the full 36 by 24 millimeter area of the image sensor. This image area is recommended for scenarios like large group portraits and landscape photos that will be printed at large sizes. The DX 24x16 option is for use with DX lenses and will allow you to use a 24x16 millimeter area of the image sensor at the center. Now that we've discussed the image area options, let's take a moment to talk about the camera's image quality and image size options. Your Nikon D600 can record image files in two different image quality settings, or file types, RAW and JPEG. First, there is RAW, or NEF, settings. RAW files are not actually image files. They are actually the RAW data saved to the memory card directly from the image sensor. This means that RAW must be processed on the computer before they're printed. Next, RAW file sizes are considerably larger than JPEG files. RAW files have a much broader range of tones, shadow, and highlight areas have more detail than other image files. You can extensively edit RAW files without losing image data. The other image quality setting on the D600 is JPEG. JPEG files are a standard compressed file format that is supported by any image software. Because JPEG files are compressed, the file sizes are very small compared to RAW files but they also have a much narrower range of tones and will lose some image data each time they are saved. Let's take a look at how to select the image quality settings on the D600. The fastest method is to simply press and hold the quality button while rotating the main command dial. You can see the selected image quality setting on the control panel, as well as the approximate number of images you can record on the memory card with that setting. 
The other method for selecting the image quality is through the menu system. Enter the camera's shooting menu and select image quality. Here you can choose from a variety of options. Let's start at the bottom of the list and look at the JPEG options first. There are three different JPEG options including basic, normal, and fine. The JPEG quality options determine how much compression is used when the JPEG file is saved to the memory card. Images with a basic setting will have the most compression. Images with a normal setting will have moderate compression and images with a fine setting will have the least compression. Above the JPEG settings, you will see the RAW options. You can choose to have the camera record only one RAW file each time a picture is taken, or you can choose to have the camera record one RAW file and one JPEG file each time a picture is taken. With the RAW plus JPEG options, you can choose the level of JPEG compression. Now let's talk about the image size options, which determine how many megapixels you'd like the camera to use when you're recording images. The image size options on the D600 will vary depending on the image area you have selected. Let's discuss the image size options when the camera is set to the FX or full frame format. Setting the image size is done in a similar way as selecting the image quality. Simply press and hold the quality button while rotating the sub command dial. You can also select the image size using the menu system. In the shooting menu, select image size. Here you can see that there are three options, large, medium, and small. The large option will use all 24 megapixels. The medium option will use 13 megapixels, and the small option will use 6 megapixels. One of the most important concepts in photography is exposure, or the amount of light that falls on the camera's image sensor or film. A properly exposed photo will have good detail in the shadow, mid-tone, and highlight areas. Photos that are too bright are overexposed, and photos that are too dark are said to be underexposed. There are three ways that your D600 measures light. These are the camera's metering modes. To select a metering mode, press and hold the metering mode button while rotating the main command dial. The first metering mode is called matrix metering. This is a great general use metering mode that can be used in most shooting scenarios. The camera sets the exposure automatically to suit the scene. This is a good mode to use for many situations, but sometimes when the scene is very bright or very dark, you may want to use a different metering mode. The next metering mode is center weighted metering. This is a classic metering mode used for portraits. Center weighted metering will evaluate the entire frame and assign the greatest weight to the center area. The last metering mode is spot metering. This is a great mode to use when there is a lot of contrast between the background and the subject, when the background is either very bright or very dark. This metering mode will meter off the selected focus point unless the focus point selection is set to auto, in which case metering will be determined based on the center focus point. Now that you know a little about how your camera sees and measures light to create properly exposed photos, let's talk a little about the shooting modes on your D600. Your camera's shooting modes allow you to take creative control over the camera's settings, like aperture, shutter speed, ISO, white balance, flash, as well as a variety of other settings. To select a shooting mode, press and hold the lock release while rotating the mode dial. With the auto, flash off, and scene modes, the camera chooses everything for you, all you need to do is point and shoot. To take a picture in auto mode, simply press the shutter button halfway to allow the camera to focus. The focus point or points that will achieve focus will briefly blink in red in the viewfinder, and the focus confirmation indicator will appear. If needed, the flash will pop up automatically. Then simply press the shutter button the rest of the way down to take the picture. The next mode is flash off. This mode functions in the same way as the auto mode, except that the flash is disabled. Use this mode in places where flash photography is prohibited or inappropriate. This mode is also a good mode to use for candlelight scenes or if you want to create streaks of light for creative effect. The next setting on the mode dial is scene. The D600 has many different scene modes that will help you capture great images in almost any scenario. To access the scene modes, press and hold the lock release while rotating the mode dial to scene. Then rotate the main command dial to select the scene mode. If you'd like to view additional information about the scene mode, press and hold the help button. 
There is a scene mode for portrait, landscape, child, sports, close up, night portrait, night landscape, party indoor, beach snow, sunset, dusk dawn, pet portrait, candlelight, blossom, autumn colors, food, silhouette, high key, and low key. One of the features Nikon has included on their D600 are the user settings modes, the U1 and U2 modes. These modes allow you to save entire banks of settings to a single easy to recall mode. User settings modes are especially useful and time saving when you find yourself shooting in the same location like a studio on a regular basis. Note that when the settings in the user settings modes are saved, everything is saved. All of the exposure settings, the flash settings, white balance, autofocus modes, even image quality and image file type are saved. To assign custom settings to one of the user settings modes, we'll first need to select all of the desired settings. First, we'll set the shooting mode. Note that only the P, A, S, and M modes can be registered. Then we'll select the aperture and shutter speed settings, the ISO setting, the metering mode, the white balance, and the focus mode. Now all we need to do is save all of these settings as a user settings mode. To do this, simply enter the camera's menu system and navigate to the setup menu. Here select save user settings and select the user settings mode where you'd like to save the settings and select save settings. You can also reset the user settings to factory default. To do this, enter the camera's menu system and navigate to the setup menu. Here select reset user settings. Select the user settings mode you'd like to reset and press OK. Select reset and press OK again. Now let's take a look at the more advanced shooting modes on the D600. The first mode is called Programmed Auto and is represented with a P on the control panel. In this mode, the camera automatically adjusts shutter speed and aperture for optimal exposure. But you can change the aperture and shutter speed combinations to suit your needs. To operate in this mode, press and hold the lock release and rotate the mode dial to select P. Press the shutter release button halfway down to activate the viewfinder so you can monitor the aperture and exposure settings. Press and hold the shutter release button halfway down to focus, then press the shutter release button all the way down to take the picture. You may find that the shutter speed is too slow for what you're photographing or that the aperture does not give you the depth of field that you're looking for. If you'd like to change the camera's shutter speed and aperture combination, simply rotate the main command dial. Rotate the command dial to the right for larger aperture openings and faster shutter speeds, and rotate the command dial to the left for small aperture openings and slow shutter speeds. The next shooting mode is the S or shutter priority mode. The shutter priority mode is useful for times when you want to control motion in a scene, whether it's freezing action or blurring the motion of a subject. In this mode, you'll set the shutter speed and the camera will automatically select the appropriate aperture value for proper exposure. To use the camera in shutter priority mode, select S using the lock release and mode dial. Press the shutter release button halfway down to activate the viewfinder and rotate the main command dial to set the shutter speed. The Nikon D600 has shutter speeds that range from very slow, 30 full seconds, to very fast, 1 4,000th of a second. You can view the shutter speed and aperture values on the control panel or through the camera's viewfinder. The next shooting mode is the A or aperture priority mode. The aperture priority mode is useful for times when you want to control the depth of field in an image. Depth of field is the term used to describe the distance between the nearest and farthest objects in the scene that appear acceptably sharp in an image. When only a small area or subject of an image is in focus, it's said to have a shallow depth of field. This effect is achieved by using a smaller f-stop number. When everything in both the foreground and background is in focus, an image is said to have a long depth of field. For a long depth of field, choose a large f-stop number. When you're shooting in aperture priority mode, you'll set the aperture and the camera will automatically select the correct shutter speed for proper exposure. To use this mode, use the lock release and the mode dial to select A. Again, press the shutter release button halfway to activate the viewfinder. Then rotate the sub-command dial to select an aperture value as you watch the display on the control panel or through the viewfinder. 
Once you have made your selection, press the shutter release button halfway to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. The last shooting mode is manual or M mode. This mode gives you complete control of the camera. In manual mode, you will set both the shutter speed and aperture to create the exposure. To operate the camera in manual mode, use the lock release and mode dial to select M. To set the shutter speed, rotate the main command dial. To set the aperture, rotate the sub command dial. Press the shutter release button halfway so that as you're making adjustments to the aperture and shutter speed, you can watch the exposure scale either on the information display or through the viewfinder. When the exposure level indicator is near the center of the scale, the image should be properly exposed. You can choose just the right aperture and shutter speed combination for your scene, whether you want to freeze the action or create a very shallow depth of field. Make the necessary adjustments to aperture and shutter speed and press the shutter release button halfway down to focus and the rest of the way down to take the picture. In addition to aperture and shutter speed, the camera's ISO setting will have a significant impact on whether your images are properly exposed. The ISO setting affects the image sensor's sensitivity to light. The higher the number, the less light that is required to properly expose the image sensor. You can either have the camera automatically choose the sensitivity or you can set it manually. To set the ISO on the D600, press and hold the ISO button while rotating the main command dial. You can select ISOs ranging from 100 to 6400, as well as low and high settings for special shooting situations. The low settings are the equivalent of ISOs 80 to 50. The high settings are the equivalent of ISOs 8000 to 25600. To activate the camera's auto ISO option, simply press and hold the ISO button while rotating the sub command dial until you see ISO Auto appear above the ISO setting in the control panel. With the D600's Auto ISO, the camera will automatically select an appropriate ISO setting. But the great thing about Auto ISO on this camera is that it works in conjunction with a selected minimum shutter speed that you can set according to your scenario. The Auto ISO options are accessed in the camera's shooting menu under ISO Sensitivity Settings. Here, you can simply select the ISO setting and you can set the controls for the auto ISO options. First, you can set the auto ISO to on or off. This is the same setting that is controlled with the ISO button and the sub command dial. Next, you can select the maximum ISO sensitivity. If you'd like to make sure that the camera does not use any ISO setting higher than ISO 1600, for example, simply select 1600. Now you can set the minimum shutter speed. You can select auto or you can choose any other shutter speed you like. This setting will set the slowest shutter speed that the camera will use. If the shutter speed drops to slower than what you have selected here, the camera will increase the ISO to keep the shutter speed at the minimum that you have selected. It's a good idea to set the ISO speed to suit the ambient light setting that you're shooting in. When you increase the ISO speed to a higher number for low light, a fast shutter speed can be used to avoid blurry images. The full frame image sensor on your camera is very powerful. It will allow you to use very high ISO settings and still have great images. Keep in mind, however, that some very high ISO settings will introduce digital noise or grain into your images. You'll want to experiment with the camera's ISO settings to become familiar with their range and control. Here's a guide that will help you have a basic idea of what ISO settings to use in various situations. When you're outdoors in full sun, use ISO 100 to 200. In the shade on an overcast day or indoors with lots of window light, use ISO 400. ISOs 800 and higher should be used indoors for action shots or in other low light conditions. Now that we've discussed shooting modes and ISO settings, let's take a minute to talk about the camera's release modes. The release modes determine how many times the shutter releases when you press the shutter button. The D600 has single frame, continuous low speed, continuous high speed, quiet, self timer, remote, and mirror up. To set the release mode, simply press and hold the lock release and rotate the release mode dial. In single frame release mode, one picture will be taken when you press the shutter button completely. This is a good mode for stationary subjects. 
The continuous low speed release mode will record up to five frames per second when the shutter button is pressed down completely. You can change the maximum frames per second for this release mode in the camera's custom settings menu. The continuous high speed release mode will record up to 5.5 frames per second while the shutter button is pressed down completely. The quiet shutter release mode is like the single frame release mode except that it does not beep when focus is achieved. This mode keeps sound to a minimum in quiet surroundings. The remote control release mode is for use with an optional remote control and it's a good mode to use if you'd like to reduce camera shake at very slow shutter speeds or you'd like to include yourself in the picture. The self timer mode takes the picture 10 seconds after the shutter button is pressed completely. Use this mode for self portraits or with a tripod to reduce camera shake at very slow shutter speeds. You can change the self timer delay in the camera's custom settings menu. There are options for 2, 5, 10 and 20 seconds. The last release mode, the mirror up mode, is great to use to minimize blur that can be caused by the shake of the mirror moving when the shutter is open. To use the mirror up mode, make sure that it is selected on the release mode dial. Next, frame the image and set the focus using the shutter release button. Then press the shutter release button completely to raise the mirror. Now simply press the shutter release button again to take the picture. To minimize camera shake, press the button smoothly. The mirror will lower automatically when shooting ends. The Nikon D600 has two great features that you can use to capture great photos and amazing HD video. Let's discuss the camera's live view and movie modes. To shoot in live view or prepare for movie recording, press the live view button. You can use the Live View selector to choose whether to shoot still images or movies. Please note that it is important to avoid directing the camera's lens toward the sun in Live View and movie modes, as this can seriously damage the camera's internal components. Next, you'll need to choose the camera's AF mode as well as the AF area mode. To choose the AF mode, press and hold the AF mode button and rotate the main command dial. In Live View, you can choose from AFS or Single Servo AF, AFF or Full Time Servo AF, and Manual Focus. The AFS or Single Servo AF focus mode is best suited for stationary subjects. The focus will be locked using the selected focus point when the shutter button is pressed halfway. Use this mode when you're photographing objects or stationary people. The other autofocus mode that is available in live view and movie mode is AFF or full time servo. This is a great mode to use for moving subjects. Using the selected focus point, the camera will focus continually, even without the shutter release button being pressed. Focus will be locked when the AF on button is pressed or when the shutter release button is pressed halfway down. After you've selected the autofocus mode, you'll need to choose the autofocus area mode. To do this, press and hold the AF mode button and rotate the sub-command dial. In live view and movie modes, there are four different AF area modes. Face priority, wide area, normal area, and subject tracking. The AF area modes determine how the camera chooses the focus point or area to use when auto-focusing. For the wide, normal, and subject tracking AF area modes, use the multi-selector to move the focus point to the desired area of the frame. You can press the OK button to quickly place the focus point in the center of the frame. If you select face priority, the camera will automatically find and focus on faces in the frame. Wide area is best suited for photographing landscapes and other non-portrait subjects. Use normal area when you want to pinpoint focus on a specific part of the frame. Using a tripod will help you make sure that the focus stays exactly where you want it. This is a great mode to use when you're photographing small subjects. The last AF area mode is subject tracking. This mode is great for moving subjects. You'll need to position the focus point and press the OK button. This will tell the camera to track the subject in the focus point as it moves across the frame. To end subject tracking, press the OK button again. In all of the AF modes and AF area modes, the focus point will blink while the camera is focusing. When focus has been achieved, the focus point will stop blinking. If the camera cannot focus, the focus point will blink in red. 
A live view monitor adjustment that is especially useful when using the camera outdoors in bright sunlight is monitor brightness. To adjust the monitor brightness in live view, simply press and hold the help protect button and use the top and bottom of the multi-selector to adjust the monitor brightness. Note that the image exposure is not affected when the monitor brightness is changed. In the default live view screen, several important shooting settings are displayed on the screen. Here you'll see the shooting mode, metering mode, the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. This is the number of shots remaining. At the top of the screen, you'll see the focus mode, the focus area mode, the active delighting setting, the picture control, the white balance setting, the image size and image quality settings, and the FX or DX indicator. To hide many of these icons, press the info button. To bring up a framing guide, press the info button again. Pressing the info button again will display the camera's virtual horizon, which will indicate when the camera is level, horizontally or vertically, and in the forward-backward positions. In addition to live view, your D600 is also capable of shooting high-quality HD video. When shooting movies, use an SD Speed Class 6 memory card or higher. If a slower memory card is used, the movie may not be properly recorded. While shooting movies or in live view, be sure that you do not point the lens directly into the sun as it may damage the camera's components. Just like capturing still photos, you can set the camera to record video at different resolutions or frame sizes. The D600 has two resolution settings, 1920 by 1080 and 1280 by 720. Both of these have several frame rate options. Choosing 24 frames per second will closely imitate the look that you would get if you were using a film video camera. 30 frames per second is more like what you see on television. 60 frames per second is a good option for recording fast action video. The 25 and 50 frames per second options are PAL European equivalents to the 30 and 60 frames per second options. The purpose or use of the finished video will help you decide which frame size and quality setting to use. Keep in mind that the higher the resolution, the larger the file sizes will be. The movie recording options, including frame size and quality, are available in the camera's shooting menu under Movie Settings. The first option, Frame Size, Frame Rate, is where we'll be able to select the frame size and frame rate. Choosing one of the top three options, 1920 by 1080 will allow you to capture full HD video. Use this when you want the highest resolution video the camera is capable of recording. The second resolution option, 1280 by 720, is a good option when you want to have high quality video, but it doesn't need to be full HD. This frame size could be used for family home movies or similar scenarios. After you've selected the movie frame size and rate, you'll need to choose the movie quality. Choosing the high quality over the normal quality setting will not affect the resolution of your video, but it will allow you to capture smoother motion in action sequences. To record sound in movie mode, the D600 has a built-in microphone, which will record sound automatically by default. If you'd like to change the microphone sensitivity or turn off sound recording, you can do that with the microphone option in movie settings. You can choose auto sensitivity, manual sensitivity, or microphone off. Recording movies with your D600 is easy. To use the camera's movie mode, make sure that the camera is in live view by pressing the live view button. Rotate the live view selector to movie recording. Before recording, focus using the methods that we've discussed for live view. Press the movie recording button to start recording and press it again to stop recording. Your movie files will be saved as MOV files. To view a movie that you have recorded, press the playback button and scroll to the movie you would like to play. Press the OK button to enter the movie playback. With the D600, you have the ability to trim movies within the movie playback. At the point that you'd like to have your clip start or end, press the down button on the multi-selector to pause the movie. Then press the retouch button to select the start or end point of your movie clip and use the multi-selector to make your selection. Select OK. The last thing that you'll need to do is delete the extra frames. To do this, simply press the up arrow on the multi-selector. Here you can choose to save the trimmed movie file as a new file, you can overwrite the existing movie file, 
or you can choose to cancel or preview. We'll select Save as New File and select OK. Note that selecting Overwrite Existing File will erase the original movie and replace it with the trimmed version. With the D600, you can also save one frame from a movie file and save it as a JPEG to the memory card. To do this, simply enter the movie playback. At the frame that you'd like to save, press the down button on the multi-selector to pause the movie. Press the retouch button to view the movie edit options and select save selected frame. Now simply press the top button on the multi-selector. When the dialog pops up, select yes and press OK. The Nikon D600 has a large LCD monitor where you can review images, adjust menu settings, and access the information display. There are many options available for previewing images. Many of the camera's settings can easily be accessed through the information display. Let's discuss how to use these camera features. For basic playback of your images on the camera's LCD monitor, simply press the playback button. Then you can use the multi-selector to scroll through the images. If you have a large number of images recorded on the SD memory card, you may find that it's faster to find the photos that you'd like to view if you display multiple photos on the screen at once. To do this, simply press the Zoom Out button. Pressing the Zoom Out button once will display four images on the LCD monitor. Pressing the Zoom Out button twice will display nine images. And pressing the Zoom Out button a third time will display 72 images. From here, you can use the multi-selector to scroll through the images and press the OK button for a full screen display of the image you'd like to view. You can also magnify images on the LCD monitor. This is especially useful when you want to check for good focus in detail areas of the photo. Press the zoom in button once or multiple times to see the desired level of detail in the photo. Then you can use the multi-selector to scroll top to bottom and side to side on the photo. As you're scrolling through photos in the camera's playback, you may find some images that you'd like to protect from being accidentally erased. To protect an image, simply press the Protect button. A small key icon will appear on the LCD to indicate that the image is protected. Simply press the Protect button again to unprotect the image. If you find a photo that didn't turn out, you can delete it from the memory card by pressing the Delete button. When the dialog appears, press the delete button again and the image will be removed from the memory card. Note that once an image is erased, it cannot be recovered. There are several different playback screens and options on the D600. By default, not all of the screen options are enabled. To enable the other screen options, press the menu button and navigate to the playback menu. Select playback display options. Here, you can use the multi-selector and OK button to select each of the options to be enabled. When you're finished, scroll back to Done and select OK. Let's take a look at the first and default playback screen. This screen shows some important information about the image. First, there is the memory card where the image is saved, the folder name, the file name, image quality and size settings, and the date and time that the image was recorded. At the top right corner of the screen, the frame number out of the total number of images is displayed. To view additional playback displays, press the up and down arrow buttons on the multi-selector. Pressing the up arrow button will display a full frame image with no additional information. Pressing the up arrow again will display the overview playback display. In addition to the information that was shown in the default or the file information playback display, there is a histogram of the image. The histogram gives a basic idea of the tone distribution of an image. If the histogram is shifted to the left side of the graph, the image will probably be dark or underexposed. If the histogram is shifted to the right side of the graph, the image will be too bright or overexposed. In most cases, a properly exposed photo will have data distributed over the whole graph. The histogram will help you have a basic idea of the overall exposure of your image when you're outdoors in bright sunlight and the photos are difficult to see on the LCD monitor. This screen also shows the metering mode, the shooting mode, the shutter speed, the aperture, the ISO setting, the focal length, the exposure compensation and flash compensation settings, the white balance setting, the color space, the picture control, and the active D-lighting setting. 
Pressing the up arrow again will display the first screen of the shooting data display. There are three screens in this display. Press the up arrow on the multi-selector to view the additional screens. The next playback display is the RGB histogram display. This screen shows a histogram for the whole image, as well as a histogram for each of the red, green, and blue channels of the image. Here you can see the areas of any individual channels that are shifted to the left showing the dark tones in that channel or shifted to the right showing the lighter tones in that color channel. If any of the channels have distribution that is shifted too far to the right, that color channel will be oversaturated and show little or no detail. To see areas in each channel that have been clipped or have lost detail in that channel, press and hold the thumbnail zoom out button and press the sides of the multi-selector. The areas that blink in black are the areas that have lost detail for that channel. Areas that blink in black when the top histogram is selected are areas that have lost detail in all color channels. The last screen available in the playback display is blinking highlights. This feature is useful for times when you may want to have the camera warn you if certain areas of your photo are overexposed. In this playback display, areas that are very overexposed and have lost detail in highlights will blink in black. In the playback mode, there are several useful and creative ways that you can process your images in camera. These are the retouch menu options and are accessible in playback mode by pressing the OK or the retouch button. Let's discuss several of these options now. The first item in this menu is D-Lighting, which allows you to improve detail in highlight and shadow areas in an image. First, you'll need to select the amount of correction you'd like to apply. On the right side of the screen, a preview image is displayed as you scroll through the options. Choosing Low will improve some of the darkest shadow areas, Normal will brighten more of the shadow areas, and High will brighten most of the shadow areas in an image. After you've made your selection, press OK to save the image. The camera will make a copy of the image and save it to the memory card. Retouched images have a retouch icon displayed at the top of the image. The red eye correction feature will allow you to reduce the effect of red eye in images where the flash is used. Another useful feature is trim, where you can crop a photo in camera. Using the camera's zoom in and zoom out buttons, you can adjust the size of the crop and rotating the main command dial will allow you to change the aspect ratio. You can also use the multi-selector to move the crop to your desired area of the frame. Finally, you can press OK to apply the crop and save the image as a separate file. Although photo editing software makes it fast and easy to convert your color images to black and white, your camera will do a great job with this task as well with the monochrome menu option. You can choose from black and white, sepia or brown tone, and cyanotype or blue tone. With both sepia and cyanotype, you can adjust the intensity of the color with the multi-selectors up and down arrows. In the filter effects section of the retouch menu, you can choose to apply one of seven filters to your image. The skylight filter will reduce the blue in the image. The warm filter will give the photo a warm red cast. The red, green, and blue intensifiers will enhance or intensify that specific color in the image. You can use the multi-selectors up and down arrow keys to increase or decrease the effect. The cross-screen filter is a way to create starburst effects for the light sources in the image. There are several options with this filter. First, you can choose the number of points you'd like each starburst to have. Then you can choose the amount or the brightness of the light sources that will be affected. You'll also need to choose the angle and length of the filter points. After your selections have been made, you can select Confirm to see the effects of your changes. From here, you make adjustments or you can select Save to have the copy saved to the memory card. The last filter in the filter effects is the Soft Filter, which will apply a soft photo effect to the image. You can use the multi-selector to choose the amount of softness that is applied and press OK to save a copy of the image. You can use the color balance feature to adjust the overall color of the image. Use the multi-selector to place the indicator in the area of the color grid that you'd like and press OK to save a copy of the image. 
The D600's NEF, or RAW Processing, will make a JPEG copy of a RAW file and save it to the memory card. Here you can adjust several items, image quality and size, white balance, exposure compensation, picture control, high ISO noise reduction, color space, vignette control, and delighting. After you've made the desired adjustments to each of these settings, highlight EXE and press OK to make a JPEG copy of the image. Another useful function in the retouch menu is the resize option, where you can create smaller copies of the images. First, you'll need to choose which memory card to use, then you'll want to choose the size of the image copy. Options ranging between 2.5 megapixels and 0.3 megapixels are available. Select the size you want and select OK. Select Yes and select OK again to save a resized copy to your memory card. The camera's quick retouch option will create a copy of the selected image with greater contrast and enhanced colors. The straighten function can be used for any image, but it's especially helpful for landscapes and photos of architecture. Using this function is simple. Using the left and right arrow buttons on the multi-selector, align the horizon or any other reference line with the displayed grid. When you've adjusted the photo to your liking, press the OK button to have the camera save a copy of the image. Depending on the lens and focal length that you use, you may find that some of your images have some distortion, a sometimes unwanted effect where the photo appears to be either bloated or pinched. The D600 has a feature to help correct distortion. To use it, select Distortion Control in the Retouch menu. Choose Auto to have the camera automatically correct distortion, and you'll only need to fine-tune with the multi-selector. If you'd like to have complete control over the distortion control, select Manual. Use the multi-selector to adjust the distortion control to your liking, and press OK to have the camera save a copy of the image. If you don't own a fisheye lens, but you like that effect, you can recreate it with the fisheye feature in the retouch menu. Simply select fisheye and use the left and right arrows on the multi-selector to choose how much fisheye distortion you'd like to apply and press OK to save a copy of the image. The color outline and color sketch options will allow you to create interesting and artistic effects with your photos. Similar to the distortion control, the perspective control feature will help you to reduce the distortion that is often caused when photos of architecture are taken from a low viewpoint. You can use the up, down, left, and right arrows on the multi-selector to make adjustments to the perspective distortion. Again, simply press OK to save a copy of the adjusted image. The miniature effect will allow you to create images with similar effects to photos that are commonly created with tilt-shift lenses. Use the sides of the multi-selector to choose the size of the field of focus and the top and bottom of the multi-selector to choose the area of focus. You can press the zoom out button to change the direction of the field of focus. To see a preview of the effect, press and hold the zoom in button. When you're satisfied with your changes, press the OK button to save the image to the memory card. The selective color effect allows you to create photos that have only selected colors shown in an image that is otherwise black and white. Use the multi-selector to find the area of color that you'd like to select and press the AEL-AFL button to select it. Then you can rotate the main control dial to select up to two additional colors in the same way. When you've selected the colors you'd like to be visible in the image, press OK to save a copy to the memory card. The side-by-side -side comparison option will allow you to view the original image side-by-side -side with the edited copies. If you've created multiple edited copies, you can use the multi-selector to highlight the image on the right and then use the top and bottom of the multi-selector to scroll through the edited copies. Let's discuss the focus modes that are available on the D600. When you're choosing the focus mode, the main thing you want to think about is whether or not the subject is in motion. The Nikon D600 has a sophisticated autofocus system with a variety of autofocus modes and areas that when used together will help you get great focus regardless of what type of subject you're photographing. Understanding how all of the modes and areas work together might seem a little confusing, but this chapter of the guide will help you know when to use each autofocus mode as well as each autofocus area mode. 
Let's first discuss two of the camera's autofocus modes, single servo AF and continuous servo AF. To choose an autofocus mode on the D600, press and hold the AF mode button and rotate the main command dial. The AF mode that is selected is shown on the control panel. AFS, or single servo AF, is intended for use with stationary subjects. In this mode, the focus is locked when the shutter release button is pressed halfway. This would be a good mode to choose if you're photographing products or doing portrait work with an older child or adult. AFC, or continuous servo autofocus, is the mode that you'll want to choose for photographing moving subjects. In this mode, the camera will focus continually while the shutter release button is pressed halfway. This mode is great if you're photographing a sporting event, small children, or animals. In AFA, or Auto Servo AF, the camera will automatically decide whether to use the single servo AF or continuous servo AF, depending on whether or not the subject is in motion. In this mode, the camera will switch between single and continuous servo automatically. Before we begin discussing the autofocus area modes, please note that autofocus modes and autofocus area modes are different settings but function together. Understanding how they work together will help your images have great focus. There are four basic autofocus area modes. Single point AF, dynamic area AF, 3D tracking, and auto area AF. To choose the AF area mode, press and hold the AF mode button while rotating the sub-command dial. The AF area mode will be displayed on the control panel. The first autofocus area mode is single point AF. In this autofocus area mode, you will manually select the exact focus point you'd like the camera to use for focus. This autofocus area mode is great for stationary subjects. Once you have selected single point AF for the autofocus area mode, it's easy to select the focus point using the camera's multi-selector. You can see the focus point that is selected in both the viewfinder and the information display on the LCD monitor. The camera will focus only on the subject that is in the selected focus point. If you want to quickly set the focus point back to the center point, simply press the OK button. The next autofocus area mode is Dynamic Area AF. This mode is not available in the camera's single servo AF focus mode. When you're using this mode, the initial focus point is selected manually, just like in the single point AF mode. In Dynamic mode, the areas or focus points surrounding the one that you select will be used as backup. This means that if the subject briefly leaves the selected point, the camera will focus based on information from the surrounding focus points. The dynamic area AF mode is great for subjects that generally move in one direction within the frame. In dynamic area AF, you can choose from 9, 21, or 39 points. You'll want to choose the number of dynamic area AF points based on the predictability of the moving subject. The more predictable the subject is, the less AF points you'll need. For subjects that are somewhat predictable in their movement, you could use the 9-point dynamic area AF. And for subjects that are not at all predictable, you'll want to use the 39-point dynamic area AF. With 3D tracking, focus can be maintained for subjects that quickly move not only side to side, but also forward and backward within the frame. Examples of these types of subjects would be figure skaters or rodeo participants. 3D tracking is not available in the camera's single servo AF mode. In auto area AF, the camera will automatically find the subject and choose the appropriate focus point or points to use. This auto focus area mode is available for use in both auto focus modes. Auto area AF is great for snapshots or for situations when you don't have time to select the focus point manually. However, keep in mind that in the Auto Area AF mode, the camera may occasionally choose to focus on a subject other than what you had intended. Now that we've discussed the camera's autofocus modes and autofocus area modes separately, let's talk about how all of the autofocus functions could work together in specific shooting scenarios. Let's first use a sporting event, a football game as an example. Subjects in this type of scenario will be in motion so you'd want to select the AFC, or Continuous Servo AF mode. If Single Servo AF was chosen, the camera would not continue to focus on the subject as the shutter release button was pressed halfway down. 
After the autofocus mode is set to AFC, either dynamic area or 3D tracking would be good choices for the autofocus area mode. The speed and predictability of the subjects would determine whether dynamic area or 3D tracking would be the better choice. If the action is somewhat predictable and the motion is generally from side to side, using the dynamic area AF would get good results. If the action is more erratic and the motion is not only side to side but forward and backward as well, 3D tracking would be a good option. So when you're at a sporting event like a football game, you'll probably want to choose continuous servo AF for your focus mode. And depending on the level of action in the game, either dynamic area or 3D tracking for the AF area mode. Now let's discuss a portrait scenario. Assuming that you're photographing an older child or adult, the subject will be stationary. So a good AF mode to use would be the single servo AF. For the autofocus area mode, you could choose the auto area AF or the single point AF. For older subjects with less motion, the single point AF would be the best way to assure the focus was exactly where you intended it. But if the subject was a younger child, there may not be time to select the individual focus point, so the auto servo AF might be a better option. When you're doing portrait work for older children and adults, using single servo AF combined with single point AF will give you the most accurate results. When you're photographing younger children, you may want to use the auto servo AF combined with the auto area AF to get good focus. The last of the focusing modes is the manual focus or MF mode. This gives you the control to manually focus on any subject through the viewfinder by using the focus ring. Sometimes a photo may have poor focus, but it's not related to the camera's focus mode or focus area mode. Camera shake happens when the camera moves while the shutter is open, exposing the image sensor. Always try to steady the camera. Holding it with two hands and pressing the viewfinder gently against your face will help. You can also lean against something or use a tripod, a monopod, or even a bean bag to steady the camera. You can also reduce the effect of camera shake by selecting a fast shutter speed. This reduces the amount of time the image sensor is exposed to shaky conditions. A helpful rule of thumb is to set your shutter speed to one over the focal length. Confusing? Let me explain. If the focal length on your lens is 300 millimeters, for example, you should set your shutter speed to at least 1 300th of a second. If the focal length is 30 millimeters, you might get by by using a shutter speed as low as 1 30th of a second. Let's take a look at the D600's sophisticated menu system. To access the menus, simply press the menu button. There are five different menus, including the playback, shooting, custom setting, setup, retouch, and my menu. Many of these settings are discussed in greater detail in other chapters of this guide. We'll just look at an overview of the menu items in this chapter. Let's first take a look at each of the items in the playback menu. First, there is the delete option. Here you can choose to delete a selected group of images, delete images by the date they were taken, or you can delete all of the images. The next playback menu item is the playback folder. Here you can select which folder of images you'd like to be viewed in the playback mode. The next option is hide image. With this option, you can select images that you'd like only to be viewed through the camera's hide image menu. Images that you select with this option cannot be deleted or played back. The next option is the Playback Display Options folder. This is where you can choose which display playback options you'd like to be enabled. Under Basic Photo Information, you can select whether or not you'd like to have the focus point that was used shown in the image playback. Under Additional Photo Info, you can choose to enable or disable the Image Only option, Blinking Highlights, RGB histogram, the shooting data, and the overview playback displays. The copy image option will allow you to copy images from one memory card to the other. The next option allows you to turn the image review on or off. The next option allows you to select how you'd like the camera to display images in playback after you have deleted an image. You can choose from three different options. Here, you can choose to have images that were taken with a vertical orientation automatically rotate for viewing in the playback screen. The next option is the slideshow. 
where you can create a slideshow of the images for playback on the camera's LCD or television when the camera is connected with a compatible cable. The DPOF print order option will allow you to choose the order that images are printed directly from the camera when you're using a compatible printer. The next menu is the shooting menu. The first option is reset shooting menu, which will allow you to reset the shooting menu settings to factory default. Next, there are the storage folder and file naming options, which will allow you to select the folder where your files are saved, as well as the naming structure and the file name prefix for your files. The next option is role played by card in slot two. This option will allow you to choose whether you'd like the secondary card to be used for overflow, backup, or to store the JPEG images when your camera is set to RAW plus JPEG. The next two options are the image quality, size, and area. The JPEG compression options allows you to choose whether image quality or file size is a priority when recording JPEG images. The next option, NEF RAW Recording, will allow you to choose the bit depth and compression for NEF image files. The next two options are White Balance and Set Picture Control, which will allow you to choose the White Balance and Picture Control settings. Manage Picture Control will allow you to adjust, edit, and save custom picture controls. Next, there is the Auto Distortion Control option. When enabled, this option will automatically correct the distortion that is caused by certain lenses. Next, there is the color space option. Your camera has two color space options. Some photographers prefer the sRGB mode as it requires less processing later. Other photographers prefer the Adobe RGB mode as this mode has a wider range of colors, making it a preferred option for images that will be extensively processed on the computer. The active delighting option is next. Active delighting helps preserve highlight and shadow areas, making images look more natural. Overall, active delighting is a great way to improve your photos in camera. The next option is HDR, or high dynamic range. When enabled, the camera will capture two images at different exposures and combine them to create an image with a super realistic range of shadows and highlights. You can select the variation of exposure between the images, as well as the level of smoothing. Next, there is vignette control, which will reduce the vignetting effect that is caused by certain lenses. The next two options, long exposure noise reduction and high ISO noise reduction, will allow you to enable noise reduction for long exposures, as well as set the level of noise reduction for images taken at high ISO settings. ISO sensitivity settings is where you can select the ISO as well as the auto ISO controls. Next, there is the remote control mode option, which will allow you to select one of three modes to use with an optional remote control. With the multiple exposure option, you can set up the camera to take multiple exposure photos. You can set the mode, the number of shots, and the auto gain. Next, there is the interval timer shooting option. With this feature, you can set the camera to take photos at preset time intervals, which can be minutes or hours. The time-lapse photography option will allow you to create a silent time-lapse movie. The next menu option is the movie settings option, where you can choose the movie frame size, quality, and microphone settings. You can also select the card where the movie files will be saved. The next menu is the custom setting menu where you can access a variety of settings for autofocus, metering and exposure, timers, AE lock, shooting display, bracketing flash, controls, and movie. The next menu is the setup menu. The format memory card option is first, followed by the save user settings and reset user settings options. Next, there is the monitor brightness option, which will allow you to adjust the brightness of the monitor. The clean image sensor option allows you to choose at what times you'd like the image sensor to be cleaned. Next, there is the lock mirror up for cleaning option. Note that the battery must be fully charged to use this option. Image dust off reference photo is next. With this option, you can take a photo to use in conjunction with Nikon's Capture NX2 software to remove dust spots automatically from photos when post-processing. The HDMI option is where you can choose the resolution to be used when your camera is connected to an HD television, 
and the flicker reduction is used when you're using live view or movie mode under fluorescent or mercury vapor lights. You'll want the setting to match the local AC power supply. The next options allow you to set the time and date and language for the menu system and displays. Image comment will allow you to input a comment up to 36 characters on an image. Next, there is auto image rotation. When enabled, auto image rotation will automatically rotate vertical images for easier playback. Battery info is where you can see information about the remaining battery life. The next option will allow you to enter your copyright information to be saved in the metadata for your images. The Save Load Settings option will allow you to share data settings between D600 cameras. The GPS option is for use with the optional GPS unit. Next, there is Virtual Horizon. This option will help you determine whether or not the camera is level in both the left, right, and forward, backward directions. Non-CPU lens data will allow you to enter information about a non-CPU lens to enable a variety of CPU functions. The next option is AF Fine Tune, which will allow you to fine tune focus for specific lenses. The last menu item in the setup menu is firmware version, which will display the firmware version that is currently in use. The next menu is the retouch menu. Each of these menu items are discussed in detail in chapter five. The final menu is my menu, and this is where you can store a customized list of your most frequently accessed menu items. To add a menu item to my menu, select add items. Here you can select the menu you'd like to add items from, press OK and press OK again. To remove items from my menu, select remove items and select the items you'd like to remove, then select done and press OK. Press OK again to confirm. You can also rank the menu items in my menu. If you'd prefer to have a recent settings menu displayed instead of my menu, you can select that under choose tab. The recent settings menu will display the most recently accessed menu items. Let's discuss white balance. It's important to understand that the quality of your pictures is affected by the color of the surrounding light and how your camera's electronics process that light. Compensating for varying light conditions is referred to as setting the white balance. Most light looks white to an untrained eye, but it can be composed of a range of different colors. The color of sunlight is different in daylight, in the shade, or in cloudy conditions. Daylight, for example, is fairly blue, and fluorescent light is fairly green. If your camera is set to shoot in daylight, but you're shooting in a setting with fluorescent light, your image will look overly red. Proper camera white balance takes into account the color temperature of a light source which refers to the relative warmth or coolness of white light. Human eyes are very good at judging what is white under different light sources. However, digital cameras have difficulty determining auto white balance. Incorrect white balance can create unattractive blue, orange, or even green colors in your photos. The white balance scale is expressed in measurements of Kelvin. The higher color temperatures measured in areas of 5600 Kelvin to 7500 Kelvin represent situations like a sunlit or cloudy day. These shooting situations have a greater amount of blue tones and a lesser amount of red tones. Lower color temperature situations are measured in the areas of 3200 Kelvin down to 1900 Kelvin and are found in situations like standard lighting from a tungsten light bulb or candlelight. These types of shooting situations are found on the lower end of the spectrum and produce greater amounts of red tones and lesser amounts of blue tones. Once you get acquainted with the camera's white balance settings, you can try setting your own by using the camera's custom white balance feature. To use this tool effectively, you'll want to be familiar with the color temperature that is most effective for your shooting situation. Again, most light looks white to an untrained eye. Setting your white balance will help your pictures have the proper coloring. If natural looking colors cannot be obtained with auto white balance, you can select one of the other white balance settings to suit the respective light source. There are two ways that you can select a white balance setting. First, you can press and hold the white balance button while rotating the main command dial and watch the settings on the control panel. 
The other way to select a white balance setting is through the menu system. Enter the shooting menu and select white balance. The first option is auto white balance. With this setting, the camera will attempt to automatically adjust the color temperature. The auto white balance setting has two different options, normal and keep warm lighting colors. The next white balance setting is incandescent. This is a good setting to use when taking pictures under common light bulbs. It reduces the reddish tones in a picture. This setting is marked with a light bulb icon. The fluorescent light setting is great for taking pictures under fluorescent lighting. With the D600, you can choose one of seven different fluorescent white balance options, depending on the type of fluorescent light that you're shooting under. The next white balance setting is direct sunlight. Direct sunlight is a great setting for taking pictures in the sunlight. This setting is marked with a sun icon. The next setting is the flash setting. Use this setting when you're using the built-in or an external flash unit. The next setting is cloudy. Use this setting when taking pictures on days that are overcast. Use the shade setting when you're taking pictures in the shade. It reduces the bluish tones in a picture. You can fine tune any of these white balance settings to make them more warm toned or cool toned depending on your lighting conditions. To fine tune, select any white balance setting other than K or PRE. Now simply press and hold the white balance button while rotating the sub command dial. You'll see settings for values A1 through 6 and B1 through 6. The A settings will increase the amber or warm tones in the image and the B settings will increase the blue or cool tones in the image. The higher the number value, the more amber or blue tones will be added to the image. So the A1 setting will slightly increase the amber tones, while the A6 setting will more dramatically increase the amber tones. The next white balance setting is choose color temperature and it's marked with a K icon. Use this setting when you know the color temperature of the light you're shooting under. You can choose the color temperature in the menu system or by pressing and holding the white balance button while rotating the sub command dial and watching the control panel. The last icon is the preset manual or custom white balance option. Use this setting when you want to manually set the white balance for a specific light source for the best accuracy. There are two ways to set a preset manual white balance. The first method is direct measurement and it's done by taking a picture of a white card or object for the camera's electronics to reference. An 18% gray card, which can be purchased at your local camera store, will give you the most accurate results. You can also use a white card, an object like a shirt or a piece of paper to achieve similar results. To set a preset manual white balance, select PRE on the control panel using the white balance button and the main command dial. With the D600, you can store up to four values for preset manual white balance settings. To select one of the preset manual settings, press and hold the white balance button while rotating the sub command dial. There are options D1 through D4. Select the preset number you'd like to save the white balance reading to, then press and hold the white balance button until PRE starts blinking on the control panel. Now fill the viewfinder with the white or gray object and take a picture. If the white balance measurement was successful, GD will flash in the viewfinder and good will show on the control panel. Otherwise, a flashing no GD will appear and you will need to take the picture again. To select one of the previously saved presets, make sure that the white balance setting is set to preset and press and hold the white balance button while rotating the sub command dial to make your selection. The other method for setting a preset manual white balance is the copy from existing photograph method. And it's done by selecting an existing image on the memory card for the camera to copy the white balance data from. To set a preset manual white balance from a photo on the memory card, first make sure that the white balance is set to PRE and then navigate to the white balance option in the shooting menu. Scroll to preset manual and press the right side of the multi-selector. Here, select the preset you'd like to save the white balance data to, and then press the zoom out button. Options for the preset you selected will be shown. Scroll to select image and press the right side of the multi-selector. Now you can choose the image you'd like the camera to use for white balance. When you're finished, simply press OK. 
In addition to white balance, there are two other features on your D600 that can improve the quality of your images, picture controls and active D-lighting. Let's talk about the picture controls. This feature will allow you to customize the look of your image. There are six picture controls, including standard, neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait, and landscape. The picture controls on the D600 are easily accessed with the camera's retouch button. The standard picture control is the default setting and it offers standard processing and balanced results. This is a good picture control for general situations. The neutral picture control is a good setting to choose if you wish to process your images with your computer. Colors in this picture style are natural and subdued. The vivid picture control is great for images with primary colors that you'd like to emphasize. The monochrome picture control is useful if you would like to take black and white photographs. Note, images taken in this setting cannot be converted to color later. The portrait picture control is great for portraits. It offers pleasant skin tones and textures. The landscape picture control is good for taking pictures of scenery or cities outdoors. Let's modify a picture control. First, we'll select a picture control to modify and we'll choose Vivid. To make modifications, press the right arrow on the multi-selector. Settings can be adjusted using the arrows on the multi-selector. To make the color on the Vivid picture control a little more saturated, select Saturation and use the multi-selector to choose a value toward the plus side of the scale. Press OK to save the changes. Picture controls that have been modified are shown with an asterisk on the picture control menu. The D600 also has a feature called Active D-Lighting. When enabled, this feature will preserve detail in the shadow and highlight areas of images with high contrast. This feature is most effective when it's used with matrix metering mode. To use Active D-Lighting, press the Info button once to activate the information display. Then press it again to access the settings. Scroll to Active D-Lighting and press OK. Here you can choose from Auto, Extra High, High, Normal, Low, and Off. Note that with the higher settings, more digital noise may be introduced into the shadow areas of your image. Your D600 has a powerful built-in flash that can provide you with extra light in certain shooting scenarios. The effective range of the built-in flash is between 2 and 30 feet, depending on the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. As a general rule, you'll want to keep your subject within about 3.5 to 20 feet for the best results. To use the built-in flash, simply press the flash pop-up button, and the flash will pop up. To select the flash mode, press and hold the flash mode button while rotating the main command dial. To adjust the flash compensation, press and hold the flash button while rotating the sub command dial. The first flash mode is front curtain sync. This mode is a good general use flash mode. The camera will calculate how much light is needed and the flash will provide that light. The next flash mode is red eye reduction. This mode is good to use when you're photographing people or pets. In this mode, a tiny pre-flash will fire, which causes the size of the person's pupils to shrink, lessening the effect of red eye in the photo. Because the photo is not taken immediately when the shutter release button is pressed, you'll want to avoid using this mode with moving subjects. The third flash mode is red eye reduction with slow sync. In this mode, the flash will combine the red eye reduction function with the slow sync mode. Use this mode for night portraits when you'd like the background to be properly exposed and you'd like to minimize the effects of red eyes. This mode is available only when shooting is set to programmed auto or aperture priority. It's a good idea to use a tripod in this mode to minimize blur due to camera shake. The next flash mode is slow sync. This flash mode is a good mode to use when you're photographing a subject at night and you would like to have the background and the subject properly exposed. This mode is also only available when the shooting mode is set to programmed auto or aperture priority, and you may want to use a tripod when using this mode as well. The last flash mode is rear curtain sync. In this mode, the flash fires just before the shutter closes, which will create a stream of light behind light sources. The subject will be properly exposed. Using a tripod is recommended to minimize blur due to camera shake. 
We hope you've enjoyed learning more about your Nikon D600. We know this new information will give you enough confidence and know-how to get the most out of your camera. Remember, you can refer back to any section of this guide at any time. Just select the topics that you want to review from the main menu or table of contents. Watch for more Quick Pro guides on newly released cameras. Thanks for watching.